Hey there, how's it going everyone? Welcome back, Plant Abundance here. Today we're going to be talking about the aphid, one of the most common garden pests, but one of the most easiest to contend with as well. There are about 4,000 species of aphid, of which around 250 or so are pests to food crops and ornamental plants. They're a soft-bodied insect that can stunt the plant's growth, they can cause deformations of the leaves, produce plant gals, and also transmit plant viruses and diseases. They tend to congregate in the crook of plants, right where the leaf might start to bud out. And also towards the tips and the ends of the plant's growth, where new growth is forming and flowers are forming. The good news is that there's several easy and low cost control methods that you can apply that will eliminate the problem. There's also several preventative measures that you can take to avoid getting such a large infestation in the future. Today I'll be going over several different organic methods that you can apply to get the upper hand on this pest and bring balance back to your garden. So the first organic method I'll be sharing with you today is best utilized for smaller sized gardens and also very limited scale of infestation. And it involves the manual act of just simply rubbing the aphids off of the stem or the plant. You can wear a glove when you do this if you want. Now because the aphids are a soft bodied insect, just a little bit of pressure and you'll squish those bugs away. And whatever bugs might be left on the stem are going to be so disrupted they're not going to survive and come back. I like to use this technique, especially for younger plants, when I first start to notice aphids arrive. And sometimes if you nip it in the bud right off the bat, you can prevent any further issues. The second method, and this is my favorite go-to, is to blast the aphids away using water pressure. Now this can be done with a simple hose end sprayer. I like to use the sweep setting, and I'll literally just give the plant a shower. So in about 10 seconds, I probably blasted away 500 or more aphids off this plant. Now to really get all the aphids off, you're gonna have to get closer. And sometimes I'll support the back of the stem of the plant so the plant tissue stays put. And this method works really well. There's still some aphids remaining, but if you hit up the plant a few times this way, you're really gonna get the upper hand quickly. If you want to spend more time on it, you can be more tedious and make sure that you blast all of them off the plant in one swoop. So this technique can work great for more mature established plants, but for small tender plants, or if you really want to get inside of the plant, all up into the crooks and underneath the leaves, there's another way to apply that water pressure that I really like. And that's using this little device called the bug blaster. Now I'm just going to quickly switch over using my quick release connectors here. Now for this to really work well, you need the end of your hose to remain rigid. So I found that taping the end of the hose to the shoehorn works great. You could use a piece of PVC or even a stick. Let's fire it up. So as you can see, the water shoots out in every direction. And this just does a wonderful job getting in and out of every little nook and cranny on the plant. And be prepared to get a little bit wet when doing this. But it works and it works great. So the next method I'm going to share with you, and one of the most commonly used in gardens everywhere, is the use of an insecticidal soap. Now you can buy these pre-mixed, but they're so easy and cost-effective to make at home that that's what I'd recommend that you do. And you're going to want to use an all-natural pure liquid soap like the Castle Soap or a Dr. Bronner's. And I prefer when using either one that it also contains peppermint, as the essential oils contained within will also help to repel the aphid. And you don't need to be exact. I'd say put in about three to four tablespoons to about a half gallon of water. And there's a couple different ways you can apply the solution. My favorite is to actually just use a dish sponge. And you can go around and easily squeeze that liquid right out of the sponge and saturate the area where the aphids are at. You can also get yourself a spray bottle. And this way you can easily target 
the areas that you want to treat. You can also blast off some of the aphids at the same time while you're spraying this down. So this technique is going to eradicate the aphid without harming the plant whatsoever. And the soap works by breaking down the outer layer of the aphid and then dehydrating the insect. So what I typically might do is come out here and blast off the aphids using water pressure, then follow that up within a day or two with some of this liquid soap blend. And that takes care of the problem really quick. So the next method I want to share with you is best applied on larger scale gardenscapes and this involves using the neem oil extract. Neem oil is an all natural organic product. This is derived from the neem tree. The seeds on the tree are pressed for the oil and this has many different applications in the garden. Not only is it a great insecticide but it's a great fungicide and a miticide. And you're going to need some sort of pump sprayer to apply this solution and you can get these in all sizes. This is a two gallon. And I'm going to be using two tablespoons per gallon of water. I'm only going to be filling this up halfway, so I'm going to be mixing a gallon here. Slap on the top, give it a few pumps. And you want to make sure when you're using this that you drench the plant, so you want to get the underside of the leaves and the crook right there in the center of the plant. And this not only repels the pests, but it interferes with their hormonal system, affecting their feeding, mating, and egg laying cycles. Now the one caveat to both this technique and using the insecticidal soap is that you could, in effect, be also repelling some of the beneficials that are coming into your garden, helping you to eradicate problems like this. So insects like the ladybug or the lady beetle might not come here and take habitat in your garden if you're applying these type of techniques. So use sparingly, use with caution, and pay attention before you get to spraying. If you do notice ladybugs on your plants, then don't spray, because they're doing the job for you. Which brings us to the next method I want to discuss, which is releasing these beneficial insects into your garden intentionally. Now you can purchase some of these beneficials online, so that of the lady beetle or the ladybug, also the green lacewing. When they arrive, they will come with a set of instructions on how to best release them into the garden, so I'd follow those to the T. And this is one of my all-time favorite methods because it really is connecting with nature, and that's the balance that we're trying to strike at some point in our garden designs anyways. The next method I want to discuss is planting out different plants in your garden throughout your garden design that have a built-in pest deterrent right in them. So plants in the allium family like the onion or the garlic are great examples of this. And I would plant these all throughout the garden. And these plants have a compound in them that insects want to avoid. You can also use plants as attractor plants, plants that you know the aphids are going to come to and they're going to occupy. And by doing this, you'll be protecting many of the other varieties of plants growing in your garden as those aphids will just strictly want to stick to the plants that they love the most. Some of those being that of collards and kales. And so I use those plants that way because the collard and the kale has no problem surviving the onslaught of aphids. They get past it, they get through it, and they come back nice and strong in most situations. So I don't worry about the aphids congregating too much on these plants. Some other plants you may want to consider growing are zinnias and dahlias, cosmos and asters. All of these the aphids are attracted to, and again, using those plants as attractor plants, saving the rest of your plants from any damage, can be a really effective strategy. Another method that pretty much goes without saying, I think it's the goal of most gardeners out there, is to provide your plant with an adequate amount of nutrition and hydration. So a strong and healthy, resilient plant is going to be less susceptible to pest damage. Pests are more likely to go after a weaker candidate in the garden, one that doesn't put up such a fight. So by making the foundation of your garden one of healthy soil with the proper amount of watering, not too much, you'll be creating a defensive garden strategy. Just a quick reminder, nature's always here to help. A good example of this being some of the birds that may frequent your garden. So chickadees, wrens, titmice, these birds love to feed on aphids. So if you can provide them proper habitat by maybe installing a few bird houses throughout your garden, also growing some woody trees and shrubs where they can find sanctuary, that's gonna be greatly beneficial to them and then they're gonna help you take care of the aphids. So in the long run, I believe the best long-term solution is to create a balanced ecosystem. Because remember, if you don't have any pests in your garden, 
then you don't have any beneficial insects wanting to come here as well because there's no food for them. And I think that we get to that point of balance over time by gardening naturally, organically, establishing a wide variety of plants, using companion planting and polyculture. All these things are gonna bring everything together in the long run. And then hopefully, whenever you do have a certain pest show up, it's mitigated quite quickly by nature as it comes in and solves the problem for you. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I wanna thank you all for watching. If you found it helpful or entertaining in any way, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day, and I'm always updating you on all the different projects growing on around here. So with that, I hope you're all having a great day, and I'll be talking to you again real soon. Take care.